Okay, so you're all here because you want to make a living, right? That's the idea, right? Is that correct? Okay. And you want to make a lot of money, right? Is that the idea? And you can do that, actually, amazing as that may be. And that was not always the case. When I started in the business, which is like before most of you were born, um, there were only three television networks. And if you wanted to work in the TV business, you went to work for a network, you got a job as a producer, you spent your life as an employee, you made an okay salary, and that was pretty much the end of it. Um, for myself, I quit doing that about 25 years ago, sorry to say. And uh, I bought a small video camera, in those days it wasn't so small, and I went to live in a Palestinian refugee camp in the Gaza Strip for a month, and I shot every day, just what I wanted to do. I didn't bring a camera, I didn't bring a producer, all the crap that the networks, at my last job I was a producer at CBS, so all the crap the network said you had to bring, I didn't bring, I just went by myself with a little camera. And I came back and I went to see the people at the McNeil Lira News Hour, which is still on the air remarkably, and I showed them and they bought two pieces from me for $50,000 which is not bad, not bad for one month's work. So I thought, there's something here. And on the heels of that, I started to travel around the world, make little pieces, and sell them to the network. Because what I learned, which I'm going to tell you right away, as long as it looks great on the screen, nobody cares. No, that nobody cares. Nobody cares who you made it. Nobody cares how you made it. Nobody's really interested in DPs and all that crap. They just want to see the final product. Now, that's true. And if the final product looks great, you're home free. And that's all it's all about. So I spent a couple of years traveling around the world going to real rat holes. I went to Afghanistan and I went to Uganda and I went to all terrible places. And I made all this stuff and I kept selling. The networks were buying the stuff because it was cheaper for them to buy from me than to send their camera and their producer, their, editor, their talent and all this kind of stuff. And so that was a business. And then did you ever read, um, did you ever read uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? You know that book? So the, in the book it mentions a Swedish billionaire named Jan Stenbeck and he's a real guy. And he called me up, and he was starting the first commercial television networks in Scandinavia. And he, he had a big office over on, on the City Corp building. And he said, I understand you have an interesting way of making television. Because essentially, was, he was interested in economics. I had gotten rid of the cameraman, the sound man, the producer, everybody. I made it really cheap. So I said, yeah. So he, he took me to Sweden. And then he asked me this seminal, life-changing question. And he said to me, can you teach other people how to do this? And I said to him what I say to anybody. Any idiot can do this. It's true. Any idiot can make perfect television. It's the intelligent people have a hard time. But any idiot can make, it's not that hard to do. It's really simple. So he set up a business with me and we started to build TV networks based on this model. And New York One was one of them and Channel One in London. And we, they're all over the world now. These things where it's all video journalists. One, this is a common way of working now. And then spun out of that, we started producing TV shows because that's where the real market is in cable. And we produced hundreds and hundreds of really crap reality shows, some good, some really terrible. But they pay a lot of money, so I don't really care. As long as they want, no, it's true, you can't get hung up on the thing. So, you know, you're just, it's just, you're just making stuff. So we, uh, we've produced hundreds and hundreds, thousands of hours of, of cable. And then this second revolution came along when people started to get their hands on their own gear and they started posting it on YouTube and crap like that. So I met Al Gore just after he lost the election and we started this channel, Current TV which you're probably familiar with, which the idea with CART was that people generate their own stuff. And this turned me on to the notion that anybody can really do this with a little bit of training. So we run these training courses, these video training boot camps, and we get lots of people from all over the world to come to them. And uh, in four days, we take people who never touched a video camera before and teach them how to shoot and cut and script and storytell, and by the time they pop out, they make stuff. So we were running one in New York at CUNY, right? The City University of New York, like five years ago, right? No, um, four years ago? three years ago. Three years ago, three years ago, three years ago. And, you know, this guy comes in, he's sitting in the front row, and he's got a shaved head and uh, wraparound like sunglasses, and he's got a DEA drug enforcement T-shirt on, which made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Instinctively, I went and flushed the toilet three times just because, <laughs> who knows. And he, had, he, was, he was a former state trooper from South Carolina, right? He'd come to New York, yeah, really. He's the kind of guy who pull you over and go, boy, you in a mess of troll. You know one of those guys? <laughs> so he came to the class, he turns to me, he goes, are you a Jew? <laughs> so, like, whoa. You're getting more laughs tonight than you did when you got, did stand-up comedy with Sinbad. Yeah, it's true. That's why I didn't do the stand-up anymore. So, so um, you know, the guy pays. I don't really care. So, uh, so um, he wanted to learn how to make video, and he took the course. And then in the course of the thing, I said to him, Jay, what do you do? He was a former state trooper from South Carolina who ran drug dogs. You know, these dogs that smell drugs and stuff. And he set up his own company, and he rented out drug dogs to what he called local law enforcement authorities in the South. 
So I said, okay. I said, you know what, man? I think there's a TV show in here. You know, sometimes you hear something, you think there's just, there's just a natural TV show here, Animal Planet or something. So I said, go back and go and film what your life is like. All right? You got the camera, you got the lessons, you know what to do. Go back and shoot like, you know, what you do. So he went back and he shot a pile of crap and he sent it up to us and we recut it and we went back and forth and back and forth and he had his sort of cousin, was that who it was? Yeah, his cousin the from cousin, Brooklyn. Cousin Bubba help him out with the shooting. So then they come up to New York City and we looked at the video, we think there's something there. So, um, so we cut together uh, this promo reel. Now this is how you sell stuff. So we cut together this reel. This, this thing runs like, what, two and a half minutes, three minutes? That's the most you want to do. And essentially, we cut together this teaser reel, and we started to schlep it around, as we say in South Carolina, um, to different networks. So we took it to Animal Planet, because it was about dogs. And we took it to Discovery, we took it to TLC, and then we took it to True TV. And True TV bought it, remarkably. And they bought it, and they commissioned a pilot, and they paid $250,000 to make the pilot. And they aired the pilot, and the pilot rated incredibly well. So we did three seasons, right? Three 13-episode seasons with Jay Russell called Southern Fried Stings. It's a stupid name, is it, actually. Well, they were going to call it Southern Fried Justice, but they couldn't clear the title. And Southern Fried Justice is obviously much better, but Southern Fried Stings it was. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's what they want. It's crap, it's crap, but this is what they want. But this is how you sell the show. So as soon as they show the show, they say, we got to have that. And so we produced this thing at 250000 per half hour, blocks of 13, and we gave Jay, what, like $100 a show and all the pop you couldn't drink, right? <laughs> the interesting thing with that reel is we delivered two things here. We delivered a concept, but we delivered a host, and that is really, really important. You can have a great idea, but if you don't have somebody in mind as a potential host, somebody who can front the thing, then it's going to be a much, much harder sell for you. So in addition to delivering this pitch reel, we also delivered just a video of Jay talking. So we sat him down and we pointed the camera at him and we just had him say some of the stuff that he normally says, some of the lines that Michael's already used. He pulled a pair of handcuffs out of his pocket and waved them and said, this ain't no Hannah Montana accessory. <laughs> so we sold them on the concept, not just of the show idea, but also of Jay. You know, the whole thing went together. It was a package, it went hand in hand. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about finding clients, because obviously once you've got your perfect pitch reel, um, then you have to find the right clients. Uh, and this people find often the most challenging thing, uh, especially if you're a bit of an introvert and you find it difficult um, to kind of make the approach. Um, we're going to take you through some of the things that we do um, that we've found to be tried and trusted ways of uh, finding a client and pitching the idea successfully. Because at the end of the day, if like us, you know, you have a, a ton of pitch reels that nobody wants, you're not actually going to be making a living. So how do you go out and find those clients? Um, what, we, what you probably realize from our partnership here is that Michael is the consummate salesman. Um, and when it comes to finding clients and everything else, this is very much his domain. I'm, as you know, you probably know, everybody who has a salesperson also needs somebody who delivers. And that's my job. I'm the one that makes the trains run on time. But when it comes to finding clients, Michael over many years has developed a very, um, a very robust technique for finding people who you know, perhaps don't actually realize that they need your services. Um, so do you want to talk through your yeah, so right, 100 right, right, letters? Right. Okay, so you're sitting here saying to yourself, this all sounds great, I got an iPhone, I know how to do this, but nobody's gonna look at my stuff, right? That's exactly what you're thinking. I am not a production company, I don't have great context, nobody knows, it doesn't make any difference. It absolutely doesn't make any difference. You can get, as long as you have something perfect to put in front of somebody, you can get in front of somebody. The question is, how do you get in front of somebody, okay? The, the opportunities are all around you all the time, particularly as we talked about before, not only with cable, but with every magazine and newspaper and publication getting into iPads and getting online and needing video. So if you, st I would start, if I were you, I'd start with something you have an interest in. So if you like, you know, tennis or whatever the thing is, sports, Go find tennis magazines, go to their websites, and nine out of 10 times, because I looked at golf for a long time, Golf Digest and stuff, their video sucks. It absolutely, positively blows. And my guess is you could do a much better job than what they got, but how do you get in front of them, okay? Here's the first rule. Only talk to the CEO. Do not waste your time with anybody else, because if you can convince the CEO, then the deal is done. If you end up talking to some junior vice president in charge of, he's never going to do it because he's frightened of losing his job, he won't take a risk, he needs permission, blah, 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 blah. This is why all business is full of PCs because everybody thought, I can't get fired for buying a PC. You do not want to deal with these people. So how do you get the name of the CEO? It's in the magazine or it's online. 
So go figure out who the CEO is. Now, next thing you got to do is you have to get in front of them. You have to write them a little email or stuff. These guys do not publish their email addresses. However, that shouldn't deter you because all you have to do is send an email. I oftentimes send the email just to the, the, the PR and the advertising department because they're nervous. And I say, please forward to. And so sometimes, they, well, sometimes I write a letter because today so few people write letters that actually get a lot of traction with a written letter in an envelope that actually gets mailed. And what do you say to them once you have them and you have your target? First of all, your target has to be somebody who needs your help. You're not really interested in selling them a video. You're interested in solving their problem. You want to help them. And their problem is their video blows. And they're paying a lot of money for it at the same time. No, it's true. Nobody will come to you if you go, I really love your magazine. You have great stuff. That's great. Go buy a copy of it and send me $8. On the other hand, if you write to them and say, you know what? Your video absolutely sucks. That's going to get their attention. It's true, because that's who people listen to, right? Okay? And you have to get very aggressive and also really short. I mean, people have really short attention spans, so get to the point right from the beginning. Do not send out generic letters, dear so-and-so, you may not have heard of me, blah, 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 blah. I've been a student for blah, blah, Because that stuff goes right in the trash. You've got to start from the beginning and go, your video sucks, but I can help you. Okay? Now, I always say to Lisa, you write 100 letters, you get 10 meetings, you get one deal. And that's been the rule of thumb since we started doing this. <laughs> <laughs>